will ask you. Did it ask you this time? It did. Okay. All right. Step one, new repo. Name it. And in this case, we're going to clone this down. So we need something to clone. So we're going to add a readme and we're going to add a get ignore template for node. And we're going to create the repository. All right, I'm going to open iTerm. All right, we're going to next, we're going to clone it. Okay, so we're going to clone it and we're going to CD into it and we're going to open our. We don't really need this. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, we'll just go here. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do, we have a brand new repo. We only have a readme and a get ignore in here. Okay. Is we're gonna start to structure out our app. And a few things that we need. First thing that we need is a package JSON. So we're gonna say npm init dash y is fine. That's going to create our package JSON. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do our scripts. So we'll have a start script, which will be node and a server script, which will be node mod. So these are just structure, right? We're just getting everything prepared whoa okay. all right so now we can run those when we have the chance now we're going to structure our folders just a little bit so we're going to need a couple of folders right we're going to so we're going to make our directory we're going to have an api which will house our server um, a data folder, which will have our data. And for now, we'll leave that. The next thing we want to do is create some some files that we can work with. Okay, so we need an index.js file. That's our primary, right? Inside of API, we want to have a server.js file. And we don't have to worry about data right now. Okay, so now we have a couple of files that we can work with. And the next thing that we want is we want to go ahead and install our NPM packages that we're going to need or some of them. And so we'll go ahead and say NPM I, and what do we know we need for sure? Well, we need Express, uh, Helmet, Morgan, uh, Coors, that'll work for now. Oh, Next. yeah. Um, yeah, well, we had got to that point, so we'll install it when we get there. All right, we'll let those install. We also want to install um, our node mod and the dev dependency, and we'll install that. Okay, so now we have some structure. Now we need to build a server. So index is just our point of entry that just has the minimum required, but it's always easiest just to build what you need and then extract out, All right? So we're gonna say we have to have express, right? Because this is an express app. Mm -hmm. We want to, go ahead and start our server. We're going to invoke our server. We also want to have a port. And let's make this, uh, we'll say 5555. And then we want to have our listener, which is server.listen. That takes a port. Oops. 
and a callback. And the callback is just going to be console log. Um, and we'll do, I'll do it the way I like to look at things. I like a little bit of separation. Server is listening on port. And let's just put in our port. And save that. All right. Now we want to fire up our node mod and see if we are running. Okay. We're running live. So we have the basics of a server. And you're still there? Yes, yes, I just, okay. uh, I'm here. I just turned off the video because. No problem. And so what do we need to do next with our server? So let's move this over here. And we want to extract okay. these two things. Go ahead. Export it. We're just going to extract them and paste them over here. And then we're going to go ahead and um, export. We don't want to forget to export. And then we don't want to forget to import. Right? So, and then we'll save it. And where did we crash? Server, are we not exporting? It's not the right path. So, server, 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 that's not the right path. Where are we at here? We need to go over to API. Why is it not picking it up? Um, can you talk a little bit about how these two files are talking to each other? Like, I mean, I get like, this is the code I'm supposed to memorize to put in these two, but I'm like, so why is there a server on the index and the server on the server? And then I... So, like, and we're right back to running. Together. So this is the server. This mm -hmm. is where we're gonna build our server. We're exporting the server to the index mm -hmm. because we want this line, this, part of the code and down the road, there'll be other code that you want in the index. Um, but you could do all of this in the index or you could do it all on a server, but this is the most traditional yeah. um, method. But here we're starting our server, we're exporting our server. Now we could export this as Bob, right? And we, you know, and mm -hmm. when, See, it'll still run. It doesn't matter what we call this export because we're, mm. we're grabbing that file and we're naming it server. Mm. But it's easiest to follow if you are consistent. So when you come here, you say, oh, okay, we're going to go grab this server file. We're gonna do whatever it does there. Then we're gonna come over here, we have our port, and then we're gonna have our listener. And so this is module imports, imports, exports, We're exporting here, importing here. And at this point, we don't need the index anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. So now we can start to build our server, but notice it's running. Right? The first second I can fire that thing up and get running, I do. So that way we know what's there. Now, at this point, we do need to, I'm gonna go ahead and npm install .env so that we can add env files to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and create an env file as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and over here and put a port 4040. And we're going to import that. Now you can import your, your ENV config anywhere, but I recommend doing it at the very first line. So that way it affects everything. 
higher it is, the more it affects. Notice we saved. We've now switched to 4040, so we know that the ENV file is working and our app is currently working. What what is the ENV what does the ENV file do? Gives you an alternate port just in case? It gives us environmental variables, not just a port, anything we want in here. We could have hi, this is Zach. And if we come over here and we console log process dot env dot hi and oh, might help if I spell that right. Hi, right? This is Zach. It's just a variable. But the point of the env variable is that we don't pass that to GitHub. This get ignore tells us, so we put anything we want to ignore here mm -hmm. so that it doesn't go to GitHub and .env is listed. So if we do a git status, mm -hmm. notice the env file is not in there. So that's where you put your secrets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that you have access to them, but nobody else does. All right. So. We have a basic server, it's running. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we can do an end request. And so we'll do server.get, we'll just do slash, and we will say res.send I love node. All right, server's running. Let's go ahead and test our endpoint. So we'll just drag this over here halfway and we'll say localhost 4040 slash I love node. All right. Our server is now returning information. And typically what I like to do is I will make this a res.status. 200 and then say status 200 oops, come on keyboard 200 with a message um this server is live and then i will put a uh, new date dot to local time string and that way when you go to check your server you just go to slash and you send it ah, and you know it's live because 44814 if we send it again 44820 this server is real we know that we don't have mm -hmm. to guess that the server is running we know So the next thing that I do is now I go ahead and import my other packages that I need. Const, and here we're going to say, so which ones did we do? We did Morgan, Const Cores, Const Helmet. I think that's the only ones that we did. And now we're going to invoke our middleware. Now remember, JavaScript runs top to bottom, right to left. So we want to have all of these middleware before we do any endpoints because that's where it matters. And so let's go ahead and put in the middlewares. And so we'll say server.use. Helmet should always be the very first one. Mm -hmm. Then we'll do Morgan and we'll do cores. Now I set Morgan for dev, that's the one I like, but there's several, there's tiny, there's others, you can go to Morgan and look at what options they have. Notice, I wrote this code, I saved it, I checked to make sure my server's running because I want to always make sure that I write code that works and I send it, good. Everything is still live and happy. Now, it's important to realize if you look at, if we comment out header, uh, helmet, 
and we save it and we run and we go to headers, uh, not that headers. Uh, here we go. Notice that it has these things, these headers and there's like six or seven are the standard depending on a little bit of difference. Mm -hmm. okay. And it tells us like our access control allow origin that deals with our cores is everything. Notice that it says X powered by express. We want to get rid of this for security purposes. We don't want that in there. And so that's what helmet does. So when you run helmet and you send it, notice now we have 20 headers and we've got things like this content security policy. And we've got all these different things, but express is nowhere in here. We don't want to give unsavory types any more information than they need. And we don't need that. So that's what Helmet does. It removes that for us. Helmet is like a layer of security. Yep. And that's why it should be at the very top so that it affects everything below it. That's why it's called Helmet because it's protecting. Yep. I, I assume so. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. it, was, maybe it was John <laughs> Helmet. Who knows? You're like, yeah. <laughs> But I assume that it's, I, I think of a knight's helmet or something. <laughs> but it could be like Crapper, you know, John Crapper invented the toilet. So you never his know. His name was Crapper? <laughs> yeah, that's why we call it a Crapper because his name was Crapper. So it could be, you know, John Helmet or something, but who knows. <laughs> but so we've now added security cores. There's also security. We've added these things that are needed. And we have added a test route. So we can go ahead now and do server.use and it, we're gonna go ahead and do our catch, right? And that is air, rec, res, and next. And then you can go ahead and do your copy and paste that so you could go ahead and say for now right console log uh error dot message if you want or oops, broken we can save it we can run and make sure that we're still getting something there and we can do your res dot status and we could say error.status or 500. And we want to go ahead and return a JSON object there as well. And so we have status. Um, we, uh, we can do whatever we want, I guess. So this is, this is like the middleware for error message? This is your error handler, yeah. Error handler. It's yeah, your universal error handler that uses next. That's about the only middleware you can write to be to start off with. Okay. So at this point, we'll test again, make sure that we still are in good shape. Where uh, oh there it is. I use insomnia so much I have to think about these. Okay, so we have a fully functioning server. It'll do, it works. We can mm -hmm. test it, right? We have some security. This process right here, have to master. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing that you have to think about is, what you're gonna come across, and I wanted to let me, because they do it different than I do. So let me open over here and let's go to, do I have one? And so let's see here. Okay. So, because he, he does his structure a bit different than I do, and I don't want to deviate too far from that. So we have users model 
and and so let's just move this out of the way. And so now we can go ahead and start to think about the rest of the structure that we want to have. Right? And if we follow this basic structure of, let's see, yeah, we can look at the off one, I guess. <laughs> Let's see, off to just looking at what things I had to cover. Um, all right, so let's look at, let's go ahead and actually let's just do a commit real quick. Um, I won't use my shortcuts. I have my own philosophy and mm -hmm. published commit structure oh. that uses emojis and oh. it's all pretty and fancy. But wow. I don't want to confuse. So, <laughs> okay, Mr. So, Fancy. Hey, when you use a tool all the time, you got to make it work. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and I guess I'll just add everything. I'll do a commit real fast. No, uh, okay, no, okay, there you go. Um, basic server. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we'll make a couple more folders and we'll say auth and API users. And then inside of auth, um, so let's think about what we want, right? So we can say, Inside of auth, what things do we want to have? Well, we're going to have um, probably an auth middleware. Well, I like to do middleware separately, but um, auth, and then we'd have to have an auth router. Right? Because we don't need a model because that's going to be inside of users. Right? So let's go ahead and say API users. And inside of users, what do we need to have? So if you think about what options we have, we're gonna to have to talk to a database, right? So we're gonna need a user's model. And we're also going to have a route, right? Or more routes, one or more. So we'll have a user's route. Okay, and so we have those. Can you kind of, I mean, I kind of get the users, mm -hmm. but what is auth again? Authentication. Authentication. Yeah. And so that's only things related to authentication. Now we could do, let's just say, I mean, let's say that you were doing a books app, right? Where you're going to log in, you're going to have something happening with books. So we could also say we could have a directory for books and then inside of our books, um, uh, let me move that, move, put it in the wrong spot, move books to API books. And then um, let's go ahead and say API books, and so we could have a books model, right? And a books router, books router. And so maybe that's our other product, right? Mm -hmm. So up to this point, we haven't done anything that is unique to an app other than we named this books. Right. This is all standard information. So at this point, now we have to think about 
what else do we need? Well, we need a database, right? And I have to think about this for a minute because I haven't done it in so long. Is okay. it NPX? So we need uh, NPM I the next and SQL 83, I believe. Let's see if those will load. Gracious, what is taking so long? All right, we didn't crash. That's always a good sign when you're dealing with connects and SQLA three. Awesome. I think. We might need something else too. Like I said, I don't write backends with those at all. So I have to look. Okay. I'm just going to say time check. It's 401. I say we okay. go until no later than 420 so I can okay. get all my stuff ready for class. Sounds good. Let's go ahead. See, I'm looking at the package JS on there. Let's go ahead and do uh be crypt be crypt sure i'm spelling it because i know i'm spelling it wrong right b i think b crypt that looks right okay and we also need probably json web token uh because that's going to come up in a, in a bit mm -hmm. Let's see, we've got connects and all that. Okay, we don't need that anymore. And now, if I remember, NPX connects in it. Did you have a minus G in that? I had to remove it. I the the one of the tools I use. It likes to try to make everything global. Mm. All right. So connects init made our our uh, connects file. Wow. Good you. And the only thing, let's see. We need to make a couple modifications to this. Because we want, uh, we just want a cleaner structure, and so um, we don't need production. We don't have to worry about that. We don't need that, but we do need SQLite like three. We need. I think it's use null as default, and then. We need to say um, also, let's see, think about this. Uh, I'm not sure how to take notes on this part. Well, so you just say create your connects file. That's the important thing is that you create your connects file and you make these modifications but you can always come back in and just copy these into your code once we have it working i just can't remember is it i think all we have to do is say we want it to be in data and then we'll call this bookstore db3 and then we need a migrations path, migrations, and we need a seeds path. And inside of there, we just want it to be directory, yeah. And then we want directory again and, and data seeds. I think that's all that we need there. 
So in the connects file, you modified it by adding a file name and the migrations in the seeds. Did you do something uh, else? Um, and added this use null as default true. Hmm. And I think we have to actually, pretty sure we have to add, there's another deal with the pool, but I can't remember what that is right mm -hmm. this moment for, um, but we can find that um, for bridge table. And let's see, then we need to make a DB config file. I guess we can do that next. So we'll say touch data DB config js and this is a template file the same thing happens over and over and over and over again we're going to use it a million times but let's see if i can remember it connects require connects const config is our config file const environment is process env node environment. And then finally, we need to export it, I think. I guess we'll find out when we run it. Exports, and we have to do connects, config, and then our array with our env file. And this, this file kind of, I'm guessing it, I mean, it's called DB config. So this configurates your database. Mm -hmm. All it, it does is it tells us, it tells that we're using the connects package where the configuration lies, which is your connects file and what environment that you're running in. And then you just expo export that to the global connects here. So that's available in other places. So we can use it when we need it. It makes like all the stuff in the connects file available. Yes, it, it makes that option available to us. And let's see, the next thing that we need to do is make migration and seeds, I guess. Okay, so NPX, connects and that's it gives us this option this connects right here when we're typing that's part of what we're doing here we've set up the configuration so that it can gives us access to these additional tools uh npx connects is part of making the migrations in the seeds uh well connects npx is just the executable but connects is it migrate Migrate make, that right? Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, yep. So that is our migration and we got our migration file. And from here, we can, um, now we can build our migration. Oh boy, it doesn't give us anything, okay. We're gonna to have to return something, but we can start with that. And we're gonna return a schema. That's pretty standard. We're gonna create a table and we want to call it, um, you know, let's see. So we have to think about it in the order that we need things. Let's say books and that table. Is that right? Let me think, yeah. See, even when you don't do this stuff mm -hmm. every day, then <laughs> it will catch us all. Okay. Yeah, I think that's right. We'll know when we try to migrate it. And so we're going to say table dot increments, right? We want to have it increment by ID. Um, and we should name this book book ID, make it singular because there's only one ID per book, right? Um, what else do we have? We're gonna want a table. We're gonna want to create a, uh, the, or a uh, title that would be a string. 
So let's say title. Um, we need to give it a certain dis, uh, you know, width, how many characters we'll allow. We'll say 250. Um, do we want title to be not nullable? Yeah, I suppose we probably do, right? We want to require that. Um, anything else? Do we want it to be unique? No, we don't because two titles, but if that's the case, we also, let's, let's say we want to have a, uh, a string and we'll make that author, author, that's right. We'll make that 255 as well, if I can find the fives. Um, not nullable because that's gonna be how part of how we search. And then what else do we need? I guess let's do, uh, we'll make our table string and we'll call this a uh, description. And we'll make that, but it's really long, we'll say 1024. And we don't want we don't want to require a description. We just want to have that available to us. And then we want to go ahead and chain another, create a table. And this time we'll do users. And what do we need for users? And so we're going to need a table. In our table, we want to create a field that increments, increments, and that will be user ID. What else do we need? Uh, table dot string, um, string. Let's say email. Do we want a user? Yeah, this will do a username instead of a personal name. Make that two fifty five. We want to require that, right? Because we're going to say that they have to have a username to be able to log in. Um, let's do table.string, also a password. And yes, let's make that nice and long because we're following good security habits. We need that to be not nullable. Now, I guess username, we also want that to be uh, unique. Right. We don't want to be able to have more than one username of the same type. And who knows, maybe a situation where you have uh, maybe a role, right? And that could be, we don't need that one to be very long. We'll just do 64 there. And we'll, we don't want to make that not nullable because we may want to set a default. Okay. So we have books and we have users. And then we have to export down in the order opposite of how we created them. So we want to say, we're gonna to have to return Oof. and connects. Oops. That's, uh, we did. I think it's, yeah, I think we have to stay with schema. And then we do a drop, yeah, drop table if it exists. And so we want to drop users first. And then we want to chain, again, a drop table if it exists. And that's going to be our books. And I think that is everything. <clears throat> so let's come over here and say npx connects migrate migrate latest. Let's see if we get a database. Come on. <laughs> come on. It's like voodoo. <laughs> we got a database. All right. We're making progress. Connect, connects, migrate latest. Now, and we've confirmed that we got it didn't get any errors and we can see our database here. So the next thing we want to do is say npx connects, and I think it's seed, seed, make zero one, because hmm. we want to, we're going to have more than one, so we're going to have books. Hmm. Let's see if that made that. That looks new. Yep. 
And so we, we want to run our seeds in order. That's why they get a number. You'll also have like a, a cleanup, which is usually double zero. Mm. Um, but, and then let's also mm. do O2, which is going to be our user. We'll create that. So now we have two seeds. Mm. And now we can build our seeds real quick. Mm -hmm. And let's see, how are we doing on time? Do you want to stop here or do you want to build seeds real fast? Okay, fast. Okay, I'll try to remember how to build seeds. Um, <laughs> haven't done them in so long. So you seem to be remembering pretty well. Yeah, not as good as I probably should. But let's remove this function connects. Um, let's make this an async function. Wait a minute. Why are you removing it stuff? Because this is a different. This is a different file. Yeah, yeah, this was the. It makes the seed for you. Right. Um, but we're. I'm just going to. Um, so we want to be able to create seeds in a, in a row, and we want to be able to, um, make sure that we, we're going to do multiple seeds. If we're doing multiple seeds, then you want to be able to allow it to await in the process. So this way it just keeps the process nice and clean. Okay, so you're um, starting in O2 nope. users? Now we should be over here. Wait, okay, which file are we in? O2? Now we're in one, in one. Oh, okay. I was just in the wrong spot. O1 books. Right, and so do we, I think we should truncate, I remember right. And then, because that just wipes it out in case we have something in there and then connects oh i'm not copying and pasting connects um books and now we want to insert i think it's right and that's an array if i remember right yes i think it's an array of objects yeah that would make sense because we want to um delete our closing bracket so now in books if we look at our migration let's drag our migration over here we have four books um, we have title how the west was one um author whoa well all right that'll help out i guess we can do that we have author and description, and let's do two of these. We want to, yeah, and we'll say how the, I'm gonna get really original. The East was won by uh, Tony, Tony, I think that's how you spell Tony, the book about how the East was won, okay. So now we have two books and I don't think we have to, I don't think we need anything else. We'll find out when we try to see it. Now we can go to users and we're just gonna follow the same structure with users, right? We're just going to connects and say users. We want to truncate so that um, wipes it out. And again, we're going to await the next step, connects, users, and we're going to insert. We want to make that an uh, oops. What does an array of, do? It just removes everything that's a, uh, it just takes, it's like start you fresh. It cleans it up first. And our users, we don't have to worry about username because, I mean, user ID that will automatically generate. We have username and we'll say Bob 
we have what a password and we're not encrypting at this point so bob pass and a role of admin i guess all right and oops do that and let's go ahead and do another one for Tony, I don't know why I will keep on with that. We'll mm -hmm. call that Tony Pass. And we will make him a seller. And well, we need a comma there. Let's save that. All right, let's see if we can NPX connects C run. Save. I always feel like I hold my breath. So this this should be building a database in SQLite that will mm -hmm. that could show in SQLite. Yep, that would be in there. Okay. Yeah. No, I definitely need practice in this. I mean, this this is I'll have to of course put it on my list <laughs> along with the list of five million other things <laughs> to watch again because most of it seemed understandable. But again, I, to practice it, I need to practice it, but I have to go to class. Cause it's like, I pretty much understood what you did, but if you were like, do this, I'd be like, uh, you know? I get um, you. So. <laughs> so at this point- And it seems, it seems very doable, right? But I guess since I'm always running behind, that's probably the part where, I don't know. Uh, well, the nice thing class. is, <laughs> is that we have built out everything. The only thing that's left are the models and the routes mm -hmm. and the authentication. So there's still three parts, yeah. but this has been from start to finish, right? We haven't skipped anything. Everything is done. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording because you've got for class, if I can find 